With two awesome days of motorcycle riding and over 1,000 miles behind us, our 4,100 mile, 16 day motorcycle adventure is off to a great start. Today, we trade in our three wheels for two wheels and spend an awesome day on Mackinac Island. Part of my French to all my Good morning everybody from Mackinac City. Today we are going back to a place where I haven't been since 2005 and that is Mackinac Island. Wait, doing? Hold on. Room 205 and there's the Comfort Inn. There's the Hamilton and it is connected. It's really different. That's a nice way to put it. <laughs> We decided to head to the ferry and we'll stop for a cup of coffee along the way. With a good cup of coffee in hand, we head a block further to the pier where we will purchase tickets for the ferry, which will take us to the island. There are two ferry options to get to Mackinac Island from here. One is the Starline Mackinac Island Ferry, which is back the other way past the Comfort Inn where we are staying. And the other is Shepler's Ferry, which happens to be the one that we will be taking to the island today. It is a half a mile walk from the hotel to the pier here. We do not need parking, but if we did, there is free parking for day use. Ferries leave every 30 minutes in season, which is April to October. The ride to the island is between 15 to 25 minutes, depending on whether the ride includes a trip under the bridge or not, which for us today, it will include a trip under that amazing bridge. Although you can get tickets ahead of time online, it is not necessary. Prices are the same and cost about $30 round trip per person. We get our tickets and board the ferry. Easy as that. Now, to choose whether to be up top with the better views but windy, cooler weather, or down below where it is warm and there is no wind. Hmm. Guess we are going with a warmer, no wind option. Question Is it called Mackinac Island? Or is it called Mackinac Island? I soon realized that despite it being cooler and windy, I prefer the better views I could get up top. So and that is where I go. I always wondered why Mackinac City was spelled with a W on the end and Mackinac Island was spelled with a C. Mackinac Island is a shortened version of the Native American name Michela Mackinac and means place of the great turtle. They thought the island with its limestone bluffs looked like a giant turtle rising out of the water. In 1715, the French built Fort Michilimackinac in current day Mackinac City on the mainland. They translated the local name for the area into something that better fit their language. The spelling included the silent C that is pronounced aw. Over time, Michelin Mackinac got shortened to Mackinac. It can be confusing, but no matter how they are spelled, the island, the bridge, the city, the county, the Coast Guard cutter, or the straits, they are all pronounced the same, Mackinac. Under the bridge today and across the bridge tomorrow, 
I will share information about this magnificent structure when we ride the motorcycle across it in our day four video. That was an amazing uh, view of that bridge. I met Kim, he is a veteran from the Navy, and he helped me get some footage. As we pass that magnificent Grand Hotel, I cannot help but think about the time that I came here with Melinda in 2005. We got to spend several days on the island. Our big draw to come here was the fact that we loved the movie Somewhere in Time. This Grand Hotel was featured in that movie. When planning this ride to Northern Michigan, I immediately thought that I needed to share this beautiful island with my daughter and Gina. Sadly, we will not be seeing the Grand Hotel today. It would take several days to see everything there is to see on Mackinac Island. And since we only have a few hours, we are going to focus our day's adventures on a trip around the island's perimeter on M185 and catch some magnificent views of Lake Huron. Transportation options on the island do not include motorized vehicles. In fact, the only motorized vehicles on the island are those used for emergency services. Options to get around are walking, taking a horse-drawn wagon or taxi, or riding bicycles. We decide to rent bicycles for our trip around the island today. It will give us some exercise, the freedom to stop when we want, and help us to get around faster than if we were walking. We choose to rent bicycles from Riba's Bicycle Rentals. There are two locations for this company, one to our left leaving the pier and the other is to the right. This company has been in operation since 1960. The staff are helpful and the prices are good at about $10 an hour to rent a single speed bicycle. Gina and I attempt a tandem bicycle. Now let's see if there's two motorcycle mamas. Ride, ride this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? 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 Hey, love, go ready? ahead. I'm gonna go circle around and come back. Please do. <laughs> I haven't been on a bike in it's, I haven't been on a bike in 20 years. So <laughs> I'm in trouble. All right, what? <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> You can do it. Push into it. All right, ready? You can do it. But after a few moments of trying and a few laughs, we decide these rusty old ladies may do better on our own bikes. I am definitely rusty, but get the hang of it. Gina does as well. And of course, Kayla, she has no problems. Kayla, you ready? So funny, yes. We look over a detailed map we were given and try to decide which way to start. Do we go right through town towards mile marker zero and then start up the east side of the island? Or do we go left and start up the west side of the island towards mile marker seven? We ask the opinion of a staff member. I asked them what the best way to go and she said she likes to go left. It's less traffic and uh, less hilly. So we'll see. So left it is. We will head up the west coast on M185. In town, M185 is known as Main Street and is lined with unique shops, great restaurants, hotels, and other businesses. As we head out of town where M185 is known as Lakeshore Boulevard, we come to the west side of the island. There is a boardwalk with benches to sit at and admire the beauty of Lake Huron. State Highway M185 is the only motorless highway in the nation and wraps about 8.2 miles around the entire island. It is fairly level with only a few hills, if you want to call them that. A walk around the island on M185 can take two to four hours, which includes stops to take in some of the many sites. A bicycle ride with no stops would take about one hour. There is a library, some beautifully colored homes, and the Mackinac Island Public School. At the time of this video, it is reported that this school has 10 teachers 
and 52 students in grades K to 12. More places to stop and enjoy the views out over Lake Huron. And we take advantage of a photo opportunity. Earlier, I mentioned that Melinda and I were here in 2005, primarily as a result of our love for the movie Somewhere in Time. Almost the entire movie was filmed here on the island in 1979. Some things have changed since then, like bigger trees and torn down or moved structures. But in the detailed map I got in town today, it shows some of the filming locations. Sadly, I did not catch that until after the ride. At the end of the boardwalk here is a plaque called, Is It You? It is a monument showing the place where Richard Collier, played by Christopher Reeves, first came to face with Elise McKenna, played by Jane Seymour in the movie. To the right up on the hill is the Grand Hotel. When we were here in 2005, Melinda and I paid the $10 fee to see the Grand Hotel and sit on the world's largest porch. I am just so sorry, we will not have time to see it today. Since we headed out of town and are heading up the west side of the island, the mile markers are counting down, so we will come to seven first. Along M185, there are six Native American cultural trail displays that discuss the history and impact of Native Americans on the Great Lakes. The first one we come to is just before mile marker seven. It is here we meet Mark and Chris. Chris, where are you guys from? Cleveland, Ohio. We're celebrating our 40th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. We made it. So happy for them. The island offers 70 miles of natural and paved roads, streets, and trails to explore. Today, we are just circling the island here on Lakeshore Boulevard. Someday, I would love to come back and take advantage of exploring more of the historic landmarks, breathtaking vistas, spectacular rock formations, quiet forests, and inspiring nature trails. I will point out some of the points of interest along this route, and in some cases, we will get off the bikes. Between mile markers seven and six is Devil's Kitchen. This cave consists of two hollows in a rocky cliff one directly on top of the other. It is a great photo opportunity here. And here. This apple did not fall too far from the tree. In my younger years, I loved climbing the rocks. There's no keeping Kayla off these rocks here. And she talks me into joining her. And I'm glad I did. Gina got some great pictures of the two of us. But more importantly, the views were spectacular. A little further down the road, just before we get to mile marker six is Sunset Rock, also known as Chimney Rock. I understand at night, this is the best place to come at sunset to look out over the Straits of Mackinac and the Mackinac Bridge. Not completely sure if these were the stairs up to the rock because there is no sign. There are some private homes along here, so not sure if this leads to the private property. So we decide to just keep going. According to the map, this looks like the right area. There is a way to access Sunset Rock from up on one of the streets above. This is the place of the second Native American cultural history trail display that we come to today. A short ways between mile marker six and five, we come to Browns Brook State Roadside Park. Browns Brook is a small stream that is fed by the rainwater that seeps through the limestone and reaches the mouth of the brook through a series of underground caverns and channels. I will wait to see your golden smile.
Between mile markers four and five is British Landing. It is well worth the stop. We get off the bicycles and head over to Cannonball Oasis to get some water. If you are hungry, they are known for their famous fried pickles. Interested in a picnic lunch? The Cannonball's menu also includes burgers, hot dogs, pizza, sandwiches, salads, and more. There are picnic tables on site and benches overlooking a rocky beach and the Mackinac Bridge. Needing a restroom? They are down the walk at the Nature Center, which is operated by Mackinac State Historic Parks. Enchanted by your ways In the magic of your eyes I'll become lost in their spell So come closer, my dear Because all is well We pass the third Native American Cultural History Trail display. We made it up this little hill, probably the biggest one that we come to today. Now for a photo op. What goes up gets to come down. <laughs> This is the fourth Native American Culture History Trail display. I dearly love seeing things like this and learning the history of the area. Instead of two to three hours, I should have planned four to five hours in order to read all these panels. But I didn't. The British Landing Nature Trail, the Brownsbrook Trail on the west side of the island, this Lakeshore Nature Trail on the east side are just three of the popular trail loops on this island. Information about these trails are found at the Parks Visitor Center. Information panels are located at each of the locations. Very good. We do not stop, but this is the fifth Native American Culture History Trail display. Yes, Kayla is riding on the wrong side of the road, but there are a lot of bugs in this right-hand lane, and I'm catching most of them. She's trying to avoid them. Between mile markers two and one, we come to the thing that I have been the most anxious to see. Arch Rock. This is the most famous of the rock formations on the island. This arch towers above the water at about 146 feet and is more than 50 feet wide. <music> Kayla runs over to the rocks and gets some great pictures. She got she some. Got Perfect. Oh, you couldn't have done that again if you She always has a knack for capturing birds in flight, and this one is magnificent. That is so pretty.
this is the sixth and final Native American culture history trail. But of course, if you're coming the other way, this is the first one you come to. At the time of our visit, the access road at the top was closed. From down here, access to Arch Rock is by taking these 200 plus steps. All right, made it to the place where I really, really wanted to go. And that was the rock that we just showed you. Here's the place where you enter it. It's just down the road from the view up to it. And I ran into Mark and Stacy here and they said it's this many steps. 207. 207, are they hard or easy steps? They're very hard. hard. All they up. do have benches. <laughs> and landings, but, it's but not enough. <laughs> not enough. So there's a way to go in from the top, but it's closed. Okay. okay. I think we're just gonna go on and just look at it from here. All right, gonna get back out on the bikes and get to town and maybe get some fudge. I think I've earned it. I did not get footage coming up to this on the road, but just after mile marker one is Dwight Wood Springs. This spring represents just a few of Mackinac Island's living streams of pure water which bubble up from its limestone bedrock. Though I will add, this sign tells you it is not safe for drinking. Come on baby, take a leap of faith We got a love that's worth a wait About 80% of the island is a state park, as seen on this map in light green. Mackinac Island State Park was established in 1895. For 20 years before that, it had been Mackinac National Park, the United States' second national park. We leave the state park area and come to the Mission District, with the Cawthorn Shoreline Trail and the Greens of Mackinac on the left, and Mission Point Resort on the right. I need to make a stop at the bed and breakfast Melinda and I stayed at when we were here in 2005. I knew Kayla would appreciate the colors on this place. At mile marker zero is Marquette Park and the State Harbor Marina. Up on the hill is Fort Mackinac, which overlooks Haldimand Bay. Coming into the downtown area, and on the left is the Mackinac Island Visitor Center. Speaking about the fort, when discussing the name of the city and island, I shared that Fort Mackinac was originally built on the mainland in current day Mackinac City. The British took control of Fort Michel Mackinac in 1761 and 20 years later moved the fort to the island in its current location on Mackinac Island. When present-day Mackinac City was founded in the 1850s, the British changed the spelling of the city to reflect the way the name is pronounced. Dropped the bicycles off. That was wonderful. It was. Like everything about it was so pretty. We accomplished a lot. I, I didn't fall. There were times yeah, that I there was. Were, <laughs> <laughs> there were times that I was literally like just shocked at how pretty it was. Oh, so awesome! The views, the riding on the bikes, which my husband will never believe. You all got me on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> From three wheels to two. to two wheels, we did it. Yes. Successfully. We head down the street to lunch at Mary's Bistro. This comes as a recommendation from one of the staff members at Riba's Bicycle Rental. I'm never gonna let you go. The service is good and that food looks great. 
after a prayer for Thanksgiving for the food and the great day we've had. We say a cheer with a fry. Definitely not disappointed with this meal. Can you imagine trying to? I could never do that. I couldn't see over. <laughs> I had a hard time with what little bit I had in the basket. Little bun. Yeah, I would fall over probably. After lunch, we check out some of the shops. Mm -hmm. I get it. No. How are we going to carry that? We're not. <laughs> no room on the motorcycles, but look here. UPS delivers, and we could have shipped that hat home. Remember those flowers we got on day two of our trip? Kayla is looking for a book so she can press those flowers, even though we have limited space on the motorcycles. I looked for a Christmas ornament and found what I am looking for. No trip to Mackinac Island is complete without a visit to one of the many local fudge shops. And before heading into Murdoch's, these little guys catch my eye. What can I say? I love dogs. What are their names? Biscuits is the big one. Bagels to baby. Aww. And where are you from? Bentonville, Arkansas. Oh, is that near Rogers? Yes. That's where I'm going. We're on motorcycles, and then we're going to head down and go to Bikers, Blues, and Barbecue. Oh, Bikers, Blues, and Barbecue. Yes, ma'am. That's a big event down there. We're going to be staying down there for two days, and then go over to Eureka Springs. There you go. Sounds like fun. Yep. Nice motorcycle roads, I hear. Yes. Highway 23. I want to do the pig trail. The pig trail. That's what it's called. The pig trail? The pig trail. It was so nice getting to meet Ray and his little fur babies, Biscuit and Bagel. Now to head in and see what kind of fudge I want. I'm gonna try this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is amazing. I have never had the sea salt caramel. Good. That is the best fudge I've ever eaten. With fudge in hand and some great memories of a great day, we head back to the ferry. Bye bye, biscuit and bagel. a perfect day and now we're heading back to Mackinac City. Back in Mackinac City and we take the half a mile walk back to the hotel. Enjoying that fudge? And that salted caramel fudge I had was spectacular, but it is playing havoc on my low carb system. So Gina and I decide to head out for a walk around Mackinac City. We hit the Starbucks for a cup of coffee and check out some of the shops. It has been an amazing day. Now it's back to the hotel to rest up for the night. Until next time, everybody, God bless and safe riding out there. Part of my friends to all.